Now in this problem we have Central High School playing against Northern High School in a backgammon match. Each team has three players and each player plays two games against each of the players on the other team. So each player is going to play six games. That means the match is going to take place in six rounds and during each round three games are going to be played simultaneously. So I got Central over here, Northern over here, and in each round they're going to pair off. These three are going to pair off, play, and then separate. And the next round they come in, they'll pair off again, and so on. And each player is going to play each player on the other team twice. We want to figure out how many different ways can the match be scheduled? How many different ways can we set up these six rounds? Well, in order to play around with this problem a little bit, I'm going to name the players. We're going to call the Central High School players. They're going to be A, B, and C. And the Northern High School players are going to be M, N, and O. Oh, so I'm going to start off here. Well, I'm going to take a bit of a what I call a constructive counting approach. I'm just going to try to put together a schedule and see what I run into as I try to put together a schedule. Well, I'm going to think about the two rounds in which A is playing M. There's going to be two different rounds in which these two have to play each other. Now, what's going to happen with the other four players? I guess I have a, a few options here. It's B, I can have B play N in both rounds. So B plays the same player, and it's basically the same thing as B playing O in both rounds. So if I can count how many ways this will happen, that's basically, it's going to be the same thing as counting how many ways that will happen. Or B can play different players in each of those two rounds. So these are my two options for B. And once B is set, then C is just going to play whoever's left over there. So this is the way I'm going to organize my counting. It's a very important first step is to get organized. And here we have a nice organization. Right here we're going to look at the cases where B is playing the same player in both of these rounds and where B is playing different players. Now we have to remember back here, this case right here, we're going to have to multiply by 2 in the end. I'm going to go ahead and write that down times 2. We're going to count this up and then multiply by 2 because whatever we get for this case it's going to be the same as what we would get for that case. So let's focus on this first. We'll go ahead and look at that. We've got A is playing M and B will play the same opponent in both rounds and that leaves C with O. Now let's look at what happens when A is playing N in these two rounds. Well, who is B playing? Well, B could play O or M. That's not such a big deal. But C, well, C can't play O anymore. C's already played O twice, so C has to play M, which means B has to play O. And that's what they'll have to do in both of these. And then continuing on, in the last pair of rounds, well, there's it's obvious what each player has to do. They just have to play the remaining opponents they have left. So there are six rounds. And as we can see, we've got the six rounds here, but they're in identical pairs. You know, this is the same as this. This is the same as this. This is the same as this. So rounds, these two rounds are X's. These two rounds are Y's. These two rounds are Z's. So really, the only decision we have to make once we've set up all of these is just what order these come in. So what we're really doing is just ordering the word X, X, Y, Y, Z, Z. How many ways can we order this word? And that'll give us the order of the rounds. And we just drop these right in. Well, we've got six letters there. So that's six factorial, but then we have to divide by two factorial for each of the repeats. Because that six factorial will count, you know, over counts because the order's XX, flip it over, still XX, still have the same schedule. So six factorial is 720. Two times two times two is eight. Divide by 8, that gives us 90. So that's 90 for this case. Now when we jump back here, we see that times 2 sitting out there, and we remember to double it, because the case where B plays O in both rounds will also give us 90. That's 180 total. And now we move on to this other case here, where B plays two different people while A is playing M. So we've got A versus M in these two rounds. B plays N in one of them. B plays O in the other. And then we know who C is playing. So we'll do the same thing we did before. We'll keep just trying to construct the rounds. We'll look at what happens when A is playing N. Well, well A is playing N. Well, what's going to happen here? Well, nobody can play N. 
somebody has to play M, somebody has to play O. Well, B can't play O in both rounds because B's already played O once. C can't play O in both rounds because C has already played O once. So that means B is going to have to play O in one round and C is going to have to play O in the other because O can't play either one of them twice. And that fills out the schedule. And we just keep on going just like this. Look at what happens when A is playing O. Well, B has to play M and N. That's all that's left. Plays M in one round and in the other. Can only play one game with each. And then we know what C is doing in each of these rounds. And these six rounds, they're all different. So now we know that these are the six rounds that have to be played when A is playing M, B is playing different players while A is playing M. These are the six rounds that have to occur. All that matters is the order of these six rounds. They're all different, so there are six factorial equals 720 ways to order these six rounds. So we go back here. Our second case down here, there are 720 possibilities. We add these two together, we get 900, and we're done.